Hi, thanks for joining us once again for another round of AL.Combat. I am Edward Bowser. This is John Hammontree, Chuck Dean, and we're here in the Combat Zone for this week's question. Should schools be allowed to limit free speech for students? Now, John, sure. you are for limits. Um, a lot of our commenters have brought up the First Amendment. How does that play into this? Well, you know, a lot of our commenters uh, have to abide by our rules or else we kick their comments off offline. Definitely. Uh, you know, I think it's a, it's a reality of the workforce that there are some terms of speech that we don't allow um, on AL.com that your employer could fire you for saying. Uh, I think in order for a teacher to maintain control of a classroom or his classroom that it's uh, understandable that some terms and some expressions are off the table. Well, Chuck, a lot of people have said, what about teacher authority? Does this kind of lessen their power? I think teachers who give, the, who give power to their students to speak truth to them, to speak what they feel, how they feel it, uh, in the words they feel it in is some, of, is some of the most, potentially most powerful teaching we can have. We, 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 we listen less to our children, uh, rely on them less for information, rely on them less for insight than we do any other segment of the society because they're, 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 they're kids. Uh, I, I think they have a lot to tell us and we should, we, should, we should, as far as humanly possible, allow them to tell us in the way they think. Well, nobody's silencing sense. students, Chuck. I mean, we're just guiding them in ways that are, have been deemed by society as appropriate discourse. Uh, nobody's going to say that your son or Edward's youth group can, can't express themselves, but if your son or daughter expressing herself uh, is going to cause Edward's youth group to kill himself, then, you know, uh, there are guidelines. Uh, I, I schools have that, an obligation to take care of the kids. I, I think that's a terribly extreme example. Are there kids who say hurtful things that cause some kids to, yeah, there are, but those are outliers. And you... And, and I'm sorry, it happens. I think, I, th I had a friend once who had a teacher call and complain that his son had used the F word in class in, in, in an essay and explain it. And, and he later read the essay and he called the teacher back and said, did he misuse the word? And the, and, and the teacher didn't get, no, he didn't. Yeah. He got the word exactly, it was the right word at the right time in the right place to convey a truth. Sure. And I, I have taught my kids when they, when they speak there is no word off limits. But there, if, if but, it conveys, if it conveys what you really feel about a given situation, understanding that if you use it, there will there will be those who will hold you accountable, and there will be possibly consequences. On on that note, what are the consequences of free speech, and how do we teach the line between free speech, bullying, hate speech? Well, I mean, I can't use the F word in an AL.com column without significant repercussions. So it, you know, it seems like it's not unreasonable to teach your students there will be consequences in the real world. I think you have to accept. Uh, years ago when Timothy McVeigh killed all those folks in Oklahoma City, there's a transcript that, uh, in, that was released that conveyed many harsh words and hate. We so edited that transcript mm -hmm. down for consumption in our paper that it so mellowed him out, it conveyed a picture of a man that was not correct. Yeah. We should have used every word he used, every every foul word he used to convey what was in his mind. We do we will do more of a disservice long term to the society by worrying about how we say things when we need to understand more that our freedom is to just say things. Yeah, and I mean, I, I agree with that, and I, I'm not suggesting that we police kids' Twitters or their Facebooks. They're still going to have an avenue for expressing themselves or police even their conduct in the hallways. It's more what can you say in a classroom versus what can you say hanging out with your friends on the bleachers. And when right. they say it, when they use language that, and there's a consequence for it, and they learn something from yeah. that. They'll learn how to judiciously use the right word at the right time in the right place to convey tr meaning and power and uh, 
And that's what I want language. That's that's the First Amendment is I have the I have the right to tell you things you don't particularly want to hear. You can turn and walk away, but you should not be you should not be stop me from from saying it. I, I turn people off all the time, hang up the phone. Uh, that's that's my right. But they have a right to say it. I don't have to necessarily listen to it. Well, this battle will keep raging on. So if you want to join the comment, just jump into the comment section. Just keep it clean for us, please. And the battle keeps raging on. Know, why, why are you infringing on their rights, Edward? you want to say, it's fine by me. These dudes right. are going to make my head explode. Thanks for joining us.